So it's uh, 3.30 and um, pretty much done for work with work for the day. Uh, it's been a long day. I got going pretty early this morning. Um, you know, probably not as early as many of you would, but uh, about 8 o'clock or so, which was good for me. Um, and so I feel justified stopping now, especially because I just worked the entire way through the day, too. Um, but I now have pretty much everything off the mast, as you will see or have already seen, depending on how I edit this. Um, and uh, it's been a long day. It's it sort of, as I was going through the day, um, started to think that, you know, maybe we should... Uh, we should be replacing all the rigging, and um, I will show you some of the, the things that led me to that belief. Um, you know, not to mention just the fact that it would be nice to know that we had all new rigging, um, we would know the age of everything, and then uh, we could go forward from here rather than just sort of guessing at um, the age of things and, and guessing when things had been replaced. Um, you know, still sort of debating that, but uh, we're certainly leaning that way. The cost is a huge factor, and um, it is obviously if money didn't matter, we would probably go ahead and do it for sure. Um, but especially with the the chain plates uh, lingering, um, you know, not not totally certain we're going to go and do that. But uh, you know, thinking about it right now. Um, so, like I said, I took everything off the the mast. Um, got everything, all, all the uh, wire standing rigging in my car. Uh, all the other, you know, turnbuckles and fittings and things like that are over on the um, uh, over on the nav station. I, I'm looking at them right now in a in a beer box. Uh, yeah, I'd rather be filled with beer, but um, you know, I, I'm going to go through some of those fittings or, or most of those fittings and uh, see what we can save. Uh, you know, what what doesn't need to be replaced at this point in time. Um, as far as the other fittings on the mast, uh, well, I took some of those off too, and those are in the beer box as well. Um, and so I got to take a look at those. Uh, many of those look really good. Uh, I'd be surprised if we're going to end up replacing any of them, but who knows? I'm going to got to take a look at it. The only thing still on the mast is the, uh, well, it's really only the inner forestay. I took the 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 uh, you know uh, actual forestay off with the furler, although it is sitting out there. All the other wire, like I said, is in my car now, wound up. Um, you know, just sort of trying to decide what we're doing before I before I go and, and take all that apart. Um, that is another big thing about replacing all the rigging. It's just the idea of of having to take apart the, the furlers and put them back on, although we might get rid of the inner force day, which is a discussion for probably the blog or something like that, because it's, it's a little involved about why we want to do that. Um, but, uh, but I've dealt with furlers before, and I know they're a pain in the butt, and so I'm really not looking forward to dealing with them. But anyway, uh, that's about where I'm at. So um, this is what I did with a lot of the fittings, or all of the fittings. I, I wrote on them, so I made sure I knew how to put them back together, um, which I think is going to be a good idea. Uh, you can see here, I'll eventually take those off. So this is frustrating here. Um, this is the insulated backstay, and this is where the wire attached, the antenna actually. Uh, you just sort of turn the entire backstay into an antenna, and it was attached there with a really crappy, um, supposedly, or you can see it attached here, with a really crappy supposedly stainless steel uh, O-ring. Um, it was also covered over with tape, making it even worse, and as you can expect, it rusted. So this is our backstay. Um, you can see up top, this is relatively new, uh, up top it looks pretty good. This is the um, swage at the uh, at the masthead um, and you know everything looks looks fine up here. It's as we get farther down uh, that we start to have some problems and there's three different portions to this. So here's the the top of the SSB antenna and you can see the Norseman fitting there. Again things look pretty good right here. Um, so that top section looks decent. Um, we go down to the bottom with the, or the middle section with another Norseman fitting. That too looks pretty solid. Uh, you know, no, no rust in there, nothing going on. It's as we get lower and down by where we just saw that little O-ring attachment um, that we start to have some problems. You know, here, I don't know if you can really pick it up on the video, but in there there's a lot of corrosion. Um, you know, you can see a little bit of the, the sort of caulk or whatever that they used in the Norseman fitting. 
Um, but there's a lot of corrosion in there that I guess had seeped down from the uh, O-ring. And then on this side, we have a little bit of rust. Um, not too much, but still slightly worrisome. Um, and then we get down to the bottom. And as I'll try to show you here, this thing is bent uh, maybe just about four or five degrees off to the right-hand side. I can see it a little bit in the video. Um, maybe you can't, um, but, it, but it, it goes off to, to your right right now. Um, here's another attempt at trying to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, just bent slightly to the right. And that is in a pretty important point. Uh, obviously, if it was uh, bent anywhere, we'd be worried about it. And there's just a little bit of rust uh, coming out of the fitting there. You can see this is a nice little thing right here. Um, this is a line that goes between the uh, inner shroud and the uh, mast right above the spreader, keeping the birds off. So we'll definitely be keeping that. Um, and then here we have some of the wiring that comes out of the bottom of the mast. And you can see some of it got chafed while we were pulling the mast out. Um, it really is packed in there. I'm going to have to fix up quite a bit of that. So here we're looking at the top of the, uh, the, the Genoa furler. Um, we've got this plastic piece here. This was also on the top of the, uh, um, inter, you know, the inner four stay, uh, staysail furler as well. Um, and I took it off here and you can see, well, I don't know if you can see here, but there's a little gunk and wetness water poured out when I opened it. So really a pretty poor design because it keeps water locked against the, um, in this case, the swage on the, uh, inner four stay. It was actually against the wire. Um, and you can see there, it's, you know, not necessarily any corrosion. I haven't checked it out yet with the magnifying glass or anything, but, um, you know, definitely, definitely had some water against it here. And uh, just disappointing that that's the way that they designed it. So I'll take you through all the um, stays that I took off the, the mast. Uh, these are the mid um, shrouds. Uh, these were ones that we had intended to replace from the very beginning. Uh, they're close to original, if not original. Um, they still have the original turnbuckles on here. Or, or what's left of them after I took them off. Um, and so these were getting replaced already. So these are the forward lowers. Um, they are in pretty good shape and are probably the newest or the second newest, but you can see down here by the swage on, on both of them, uh, they're a little rusty. I, you know, don't necessarily think this would be a deal killer in themselves, in, in and of itself, but given that we're doing everything else or that we're potentially doing everything else, I definitely want to replace those. Well, here's the backstay that we already talked about. Um, and then these are the other lowers. And um, these were also ones that we had intended to replace. Uh, they got a lot of things wrong with them. Um, and they also had plastic on the covering the you know, maybe first eight feet or so off the deck, which just made them awful. They were still damp and wet and moldy um, when I got them off. I can only imagine the sort of corrosion that's happened. And you can see here, that's one of the pieces that's sort of bent to a side, to the side there. Um, so this is something that we're definitely replacing no matter what. And then we come to the uh, cap um, shrouds here. And these are other ones that are in pretty damn good condition. You can see here over on the swages, I had already uh, done um, the dye test on them. They looked pretty good. Uh, they looked fine, actually. Um, but as I started going through everything else, you know, it became, well, we just got to make our decision whether we're replacing them or not. There's nothing, no problem with these swages. You can see a little bit of rust at the top of them, but that's about it. Um, so that's our, our, our standing rigging. And here you just have some of the, well, the mess that I have on the stairs going up to our boat. But, you know, all the fittings from the mast or, or most of the fittings from the mast laid out. I got a couple more turnbuckles and stuff up top already. Um, using those bags in order to keep things in order. I'm going to go run out uh, to the store. Um, I'm really picking up stuff for other people. I thought I was going to have to go, and so I uh, took a couple orders, and um, now I'm committed to going out, but it's just as well because I can stop at the uh, library for a little while, get some free internet, and get some work done. Um, I got, uh, well, you can see right here. Um, 
I got our new wash down pump in the mail today. Um, but I am still I am still waiting for uh, the two other big orders that I made at the beginning of this week. I kind of hope that they were coming today, but I won't, you know, I'm not at all surprised that they didn't. Or, you know, who knows, maybe they'll still show up later today. Um, be great to have them because I'm sort of, like I said, I'm sort of out of other work and um, and that would be a good thing to get working on tomorrow with some of the, the hoses, final hoses and, and uh, you know, putting in this wash down pump, redoing a little bit of the electrical. Um, things like that that I can do inside, especially because tomorrow is going to be maybe possibly rainy and about 50 degrees or so. So, you know, doing stuff in the cabin would be good. Um, I'm also getting some caulk and I'm going to re rebed the uh, the stanchion post supports right at the gate. Um, you guys probably saw that. Those of you who watched the, the January videos uh, probably saw that, um, that I need to redo those. So I'm going to redo that. I'm also going to rebed a couple other things. Um, certainly the, well, I shouldn't say certainly, but probably the grab rail along that starboard side as well. Um, and uh, who knows, maybe, maybe probably a couple other things. I'm just not totally certain of what. Um, you know, I, I still have a couple other things to do in the mast, but I'm, I'm probably gonna wait uh, for a little while on that. And uh, that's about it right now. I, you know, I sort of feel like I need to make a plan. Uh, here I am mumbling to you guys, but there we go. Uh, take it easy, guys, and... Uh